The key equation for this one is the equation written up here that I've discussed in an earlier concept video linked to in the description below or floating over my head, where the overall EMF uh, of the reaction is equal to the E of reduction minus E of oxidation. Now, there are other forms of this equation, by the way. It turns out that there are forms that have a plus here, and they are also correct. Why is that possible? Well, if you flip the sign of your oxidation here so that it shows a reduction potential, so you have E reduction potential one, or, and then E reduction potential two, you can use a plus sign instead. The trick of that, though, is that it sometimes gets a little bit confusing. So this is the equation that I end up using, and it's the one that we use in our text because I personally find it easier. You don't have to worry about moving signs around. The other concept that we need to know is that anytime your uh, overall E for the reaction is positive, that is a spontaneous reaction. It's the opposite of delta G. They're inversely related sign-wise. Delta G negative is always spontaneous. E being positive is always spontaneous. So you want to make sure that you identify what's getting oxidized, what's getting reduced in each of these reactions. Then you focus in on the thing that gets reduced, put its reduction potential in here. Then you focus on the thing that gets oxidized, put its reduction potential up there, and then determine if the answer is positive. If it is, then you've got a spontaneous reaction. Does that make sense? So how do we determine if something is getting oxidized or reduced? We look at the charges or oxidation numbers. So here I've got 10 plus four, and it's getting converted into 10 plus two. So it's starting up plus four, and it's going down to plus two. That is a reduction. So I'm gonna write down my 10 here as being my GER, the thing getting reduced. Here I've got iron plus three going to iron plus two. What is that? That's going from a plus three down to plus two. That is also a reduction. So my iron plus three going down to an iron plus two is also a GER. So what does that tell you about the first equation? A, yeah, it's not possible because you've got two things being reduced. So we can cross it off. It's a bogus reaction. Anytime you have something getting reduced, something else always has to get oxidized along the way. Let's focus in on this one. I have iron zero. There's no floating charge that's so implied zero. Going up here to iron plus two. If I'm going from zero up to plus two, I'm becoming more positive by losing electrons. That's my Leo. And then here I've got, and here I've got chromium plus three going down to chromium zero. If you start at plus three and go downhill to zero, you're gaining electrons, you're becoming less positive, more negative. So that is my reduction, this is my GER. You see that? So what we'll do next is we're gonna look at the table that we're given here for this problem, the one that's floating uh, over the screen right now. And what we're looking for is any reaction anywhere that has iron zero on one side and iron two plus on the other. As you can see, the reaction that matches that is this one right here with the reduction potential of negative 0.44. Separately, we'll look for the half reaction that has chromium three plus on one side and chromium zero on the other side. As you can see, its reduction potential is negative 0.74. So I've written these numbers down right here. The negative 0.74 is the reduction potential for my reduction here, chromium three plus going down to chromium zero. One thing that's beautiful, by the way, about this system is I don't have to care about coefficients for this. As it turns out, coefficients don't affect the math at all, unlike almost everything else that we do. How about the oxidation? Well, the oxidation is this iron one, so I'll write down oxidation right there. So what do we do here? Well, all I have to do is take these numbers and insert them where they belong up here in the equation. So I've got my reduction number, which is the negative 0.74, and I'm gonna subtract from it my oxidation number, which is negative 0.44. You see that? If you throw that into your calculator, you should end up getting a final answer of negative 0.3. So negative 0.3 is the E reaction for reaction B. As you can see, it is a negative number, which means that reaction B is not spontaneous as written. I'll go and clear the board of some of this mess. We now move on to this reaction where I have a 10 going from plus four down to plus two. That is a reduction because it's going downhill, becoming more negative, less positive and iron that goes from plus two downhill to zero. Plus two down to zero is also a reduction. As you can see, I got two reductions in reaction C, which means it's impossible, so you can cross it off. What about reaction E? Reaction E is interesting because you've got a bunch of irons that are two plus. Some of those iron atoms are going down to iron zero. They're becoming less positive, so that's my GER, that's my reduction. But some of the iron atoms are actually going up to iron plus three, so some of them are becoming less negative or more positive, so they're my Leo. How is that possible? Well, remember, we've got many, 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 we've got essentially three moles of iron atoms here, iron two plus ions, I should say. What you've got is some number of those getting reduced while some number, or the, other, the rest of them are getting oxidized, I guess, so that is possible. 
So what I'm going to do is look at my chart and try and find any reaction that shows iron 2 plus on one side and iron 0 on the other. And it doesn't matter which side or if the sides match at all. I just have to write that number down. That's my reduction. And as you can see, that is this reaction right here. Again, where I have iron 2 plus on one side, iron 0 on the other, where the reduction potential is negative 0.44. And then separately, I'm going to look on the chart for the reaction or half reaction that shows iron 2 plus on one side, iron 3 plus on the other. Again, it doesn't matter where if, if I've got this one on the left and that one on the right or vice versa or if it matches or at all. I, I, I'm just looking for the reaction itself. So iron 2 plus on one side, iron 3 plus on the other. As you can see, that lines up with this reaction, which is positive 0.771. So this is my reduction. This is my oxidation. So now I'm going to take these values and insert them up into my equation up here. My reduction value goes here. So I've got my E reaction being equal to negative 0.44. OK, negative 0.44. And then I'm going to subtract from it the oxidation number. Subtract oxidation. And this oxidation is positive. So I subtract a positive number, OK? Unlike our previous example up here where I was subtracting a negative. So I got negative 0.44 minus positive 0.771. And overall, that ends up giving me a negative 1.211 as being the E reaction for E. That is a negative number, so E is not a spontaneous reaction either. So we can cross off option E. Now let's focus on reaction D. I've got a 10 4 plus going down to 10 2 plus. From 4 plus down to 2 plus, that's a reduction. So that is my GER. I'll just make note of it here. And then I've got chromium going from 0 up to plus 3. That's losing electrons by becoming more positive. So that is my Leo. I'm going to look at the chart and find the reaction that has 10 4 plus on one side and 10 2 plus on the other, which you can see is this one right here. It has a reduction potential of positive 0.154. So that's my reduction reaction. It's positive 0.154. I'm going to subtract from it the uh, reduction potential for my oxidation, which is chromium 0 on one side, chromium 3 plus on the other. As you can see, that lines up with this reaction, which has a reduction potential of negative 0.74. So I'm going to take this number 0.154 positive, subtract from it this negative number. So I subtract a negative. It's really like adding a positive. The final number that I end up getting for reaction D as being the E reaction ends up being then positive 0.894, which again is positive and is therefore spontaneous. Hence, this answer, or question's correct answer is option D.